Welcome back everyone to another episode of Tarwolf's Perspective. I want to talk to you today about my best friend and yours, Kirby. This little guy has been around since the days of the original Game Boy. And boy, does he game. Kirby is truly an icon of the video game world, immediately recognizable alongside the likes of Mario and Donkey Kong. But what makes Kirby so unique and special? In order to find out, we gotta go back to the original game where he made his debut, Kirby's Dream Land. Kirby is adorable. He's a squishy little dude with a heart of gold, always looking to help his friends and devour his enemies, but like in a cute way. Anyone familiar with the Kirby series will know. He's a pink little puffball full of nothing but love and positive energy, which he inevitably uses to stop demonic deities from erasing all of existence and replacing it with nothing but sorrow and pain. Most Kirby games in the series start out all cute and colorful, but end up taking a huge spin into horrific nightmares that completely contrast the energy of Kirby himself. But that's why we love Kirby. Even in the face of the most diabolical and terrifying enemies, he just wants to protect his friends and does it with a smile on his face. Unless, of course, it's the North American box art, in which case he all mad. <laughs> He's also by far the most powerful character in all of Nintendo's entire history. Look at Smash Ultimate for proof of this. He is my boy who lived after that attack from Galeem. He has near infinite power and potential, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. After all, we're here to talk about Kirby's Dream Land. I always love looking through the instruction manual of retro games. Sadly, I don't have one myself, but even looking at these digital pages take me back. There's a short story summary saying how King DDD stole the stars and food from the Dreamlanders, and it's up to Kirby to get it back. I also love how the instructions are told from Kirby's perspective. Hi, I'm Kirby. Pleased to meet you. I'll be doing the explaining from here on. So listen carefully, as you'll need my advice to knock out King DDD. Cringe! One fun thing I found is that the Maximum Tomato we all know was called the Bag of Magic Food. But right off the bat you'll notice something about Kirby that doesn't match anything we know about him from the future. He's not... pink. He's white. He's... He's white? Mind you, this is most likely because the original Game Boy was colorless. If anything, in this game he started off as puke green. I tried to record using this, but I just I couldn't do it. Instead, I went with the monochromatic Kirby. Another big thing that makes this first game stand out is that the copy ability is completely missing. Kirby just doesn't have it. It was only introduced in Kirby's Adventure on the NES, which came out after this. But here all you can do is the devour of power. You can still inhale and swallow enemies, but it's mostly just to give them a swift death and nothing else. You can digest Sir Kibble and Waddle do all you want, but all you'll get is sharp, sparkly turds. <laughs> There are power-ups that can sort of act like Kirby's abilities from future games. You can get a bomb, some spicy food which lets you shoot fire, and even the microphone. But these are all just temporary power-ups, much like Starman from Mario Bros. It's still fun though. Weirdly enough, he does have it in the commercial for this game. He eats this plate of Macho Supreme and becomes Macho Dude Kirby. Thanks, baby cakes. There are some other more subtle moves Kirby can pull off. If you fall from a big enough height, Kirby can headbutt enemies from above, or if he starts flying and releases the air from his gullet, the blast of air can damage lesser enemies. I always loved just eating a dude and running around, arms flailing wildly as Kirby's body is expanded to its limits. Don't make me run, I'm full of chocolate. Big ol' Kirby Chong is here. Be careful though, because you can't fly with something in your mouth. One of Kirby's main traits is his ability to fly, which you think would break any platforming game completely. But the game is designed in such a way where this isn't really the case. There are bottomless pits, but they really aren't your biggest enemy here. It's all the projectiles and enemy placements. That, and you go much slower when you're flying than if you're grounded and jumping. You also have a health bar, unlike platformers like Mario or Donkey Kong, so you're not as harshly punished for mistakes, unless you hit Gordo, who just wrecks you. <laughs> the whole game itself is four full-length levels and one boss rush of sorts at the end. It's very short. But it was an early Game Boy game. That's really all we needed. I remember blasting through this game almost every day after I first got it. I was in love. Just a fun little romp through decently sized levels, perfect for pick up and play portable gaming. The first level is the series famous Green Greens, and Kirby fans will instantly be familiar with this iconic jam playing the second the level starts. Kirby as a series has some of the best music in all of gaming. Iconic tracks that I will love forever. But beyond just having some of the most memorable and heartfelt felt songs, I think 
feel like most Kirby games are all killer and no filler. I rarely ever hear a song in any level or boss fight that I dislike. The series average for tracks is ridiculously high. Even on this beep boop brick of a console, the soundtrack bops in every level. My personal favorite has to be the final boss theme, but we'll get to that later. The level is laid out like any good first level should be, easing you into the mechanics of Kirby slowly as it tests your ability to use Kirby's kit. Until you hit this, in which case you'll just be stuck here forever. Each level has little mini bosses to break things up, which are a fun little distraction. Poppy Brother Senior! Sometimes it's even the boss itself messing with you in the level before the big showdown at the end, which I kinda love. I wish the Mega Man series did this a lot more if I'm being honest. Just have Toad Man run in and go, you know, for fun. All the levels predictably end in a boss fight, and here we get Kirby's first encounter with Wispy Woods. This guy in all his forms has shown up the most frequently as a boss in the Kirby series. He is to Kirby as the Marlboro is to Final Fantasy, though he probably smells a lot better. Hey Stinky! Once you take him out, another staple of the Kirby series that is still being used to this day is the Victory Dance! <laughs> You know I love a good victory jingle, and Kirby's is one of the best in the biz. Pure joy. Also, he dances in the intro, and when you pause the game, Kirby's got a lot of jiggle in him, and it's gonna come out one way or another. Now, it's time for Kirby to enter Castlevania! Yeah, it's just a spooky castle, but come on. There's an abundance of diagonal platforms going from the bottom to the top floor, food power-ups hidden in the walls, a literal Jesus cross. It was all foreshadowing for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I know it. What is a Kirby? The boss, Lolo Lo and La La La, are from HAL Laboratory's other series, Eggerland, or Adventures of Lolo as we knew it. Though, I don't think they were too happy with their sales of that one, since the instruction manual calls them the not-so-famous twins. Hey, Dotcom. Nice to meet you. Why would he say that to me? Savage. Next, it's on to the tropical float islands. This theme is also a certified bop. It's crazy how perfectly they capture a tropical feel on this tiny little 8-bit cartridge. There's fun little secrets to be found, you make your way through a little cave, and then Kirby assaults an entire pirate ship through the fire and the flames, steals their booty, then slams himself right into a whale's blowhole. And I found myself right on top of him, face to face with the blowhole. I knew something was there, so I reached my hand in, felt around, and Pulled out the obstruction! Ah! All in one. The boss here is Kabula, and she got them cannons if you know what I'm saying. Grabbing the mint leaf here turns the game into a shmup that fans of the series will no doubt recognize. It plays out very similar to the fights with Nova or the lore Starcutter. Fun stuff! The last full-length level is Bubbly Clouds, which is littered with these scarfy enemies who do not take too kindly to Kirby trying to suck them off. They get real bitey and then explode, so best to just hit them with an air bullet and move on. There's a fun little secret at the top of this tower where you can enter the moon like a door and then Dreamland Drop dive your way to the bottom and grab some goodies. The boss of this level is Krakow, another one of the key enemies in Kirby's rogue galaxy. Krakow shows up in some form or another about as often as Treeface, though admittedly he has a much scarier looking design. I guess they were going for shocking. I can't bust them. Now we reach the plateau of Mount DDD, and this whole level is basically a form of the arena from future Kirby games. In fact, it even uses that same theme in the lobby. The only difference is that there are short little mini levels before each boss, with the final door being blocked by an immovable Gordo. Weirdly enough, there is a doppel Kirby nearby doing some kind of dance. Just touch yourself to make it through, just like Lockdown. Then the showdown with DDD begins. And here is my favorite track in the game, DDD's theme. The way this song evolves through the Kirby series is also incredible. It's consistently such a hype builder, and it's one of my favorite video game songs of all time. The fight against DDD, while harder than most of the other fights, isn't too bad. Pretty simple pattern recognition stuff here. Dodge, suck, spit, and repeat until regicide is complete. Yeah. And that's the show. Kirby inflates himself just like a balloon and dusts Dreamland with all of its food provisions to much applause. But wait!
There's more! Once you beat the game, it lets you know how to unlock extra mode, which is kind of nuts. It makes the game way harder. Kirby takes double damage, all the enemies are replaced with freaky versions of themselves, and they have the most insane movement patterns compared to the first adventure. Even the Shotsos have evolved into bla bla Blatzy? Should that say Blasty? Blasty's nut! Even all the bosses have new attacks. The mid-boss Krakow fight becomes this insanely fast-paced nightmare. He hath become Krakto! Wispy will drop Gordos on you, Lolo Lo will follow up the box with a swift Gordo to your face, and DDD be on that speed! You'll be seeing the game over screen a lot in this mode, where Scrupulous Fingor will try to convince Kirby to get off his butt and get back to work. It's a legitimately tough challenge, really setting up the legacy of Kirby games being a fun breezy playthrough initially, but having a massive skill check in the post game for those that want it. Going back to revisit this game really reminded me of how a lot of the core values of the series have always been here from the start. It was fun! And Kirby's a fun little guy, and his first outing on the Game Boy is a fun little rip. It's nothing spectacular, you can get through the whole thing in 20 to 30 minutes unless you want to do extra mode. There's really not much of a reason to play this now compared to future Kirby games unless you're going through a legacy run of the series, which I love doing by the way. You can spring breeze your way through this one in no time. I really don't have much to complain about. It's a quick 8-bit burst of joy that fits in your pocket. That said, there's not really much to chew on here or I guess inhale, but there's nothing inherently wrong with it that brings it down. It's delightfully mid plus. I really just wanted to talk about the Kirby series as a whole, and I'm looking forward to getting into the future titles. That said, I'm putting Kirby's Dream Land in the B tier. Huge thanks, as always, go out to my supporters on Patreon, including all of those on screen, as well as Pink Pools, Max Jez, Connor Bender, Ryuzaki Law, Star Fox, The Duke of Dorks, Husser, Shadow Force, Wisdom, Sir Slush, Abunai Gaming, Mr. Toodles, Shalty, Seno Knight, Dr. Katz, Redman, Piracong, The Wise Vivi, Welfare High, Maru Chimera, Luna, Oligodendroglia, The Unknown, and Luigi Rules. Thank you guys so much for being my star allies. I also want to give a special thanks to my son for providing the voice of Kirby and the gameplay footage, and Connor Bender for providing some of the Smash footage. If you'd also like to support the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash and check out some of the tiers and rewards. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you on the next quest.